This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, happy Friday. This week, Google brought Android 13 closer to Windows 11. They brought Chrome OS closer to Mac OS and also to Windows. And they also brought out new privacy respecting advertising features. That's right. Three out of three stories this week are all about Google, but trust me, they'll be quite interesting and quite different. Our quiz this week is a special one where you have to guess the names of 20 random tech gadgets shown in pictures. It's really fun this week. It's linked down in the description and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, we had a ton of interesting new releases this week, starting with the weird new Sony Link Buds that offer open style earbuds versus the normal ear tips for $180. I've tried these briefly and I thought they were really cool and quite comfortable and especially good for biking where you'd want to hear your surroundings, though the battery life is apparently just so-so. OnePlus and Realme both released mid-range phones in the form of the OnePlus Nord CE 2G and the Realme 9 series. These all have mid-range chips fast charging, high refresh rate screens, and fairly aggressive prices. And Xiaomi also launched the flagship Redmi K50 gaming phone in partnership with Mercedes F1, though sadly only as a China first release for now. In my most recent Tech Alta video, I explain why China gets all the cool phones that we don't, so watch that next if you haven't seen it already. And my last and perhaps most personal release highlight so far is going to be that Total War Warhammer 3 is finally out. I am a huge fan of this series. I've put maybe like 3,000 hours into this game so far, at least the predecessors, so I can't wait to wrap this video up and go home and enjoy the new title. Okay, my first story of the week will be two new features of Android 13 that people on the internet have dug out that bring Android 13 and Windows 11 even closer together. First, a developer got Windows 11, at least the ARM version of it, running on a Pixel 6. That is thanks to the improved virtualization support of Android 13, so Windows is actually running with near native performance via a virtual machine setup. Of course, the guy also quickly got Doom running on it, so it's kind of proven that this is a viable solution. And now the second new feature is kind of the flip side of this. The guys at 9to5Google managed to stream Android apps from Android 13 directly to Windows 11 with a new integration from Google. Android now actually creates a new virtual display that it outputs the app to, and it sends that to a browser so you don't have to mirror your screen and you can do something else on your phone or even put it to sleep if you want. That is quite a bit more elegant than the current app streaming solution Microsoft offers with the Your Phone app, which simply occupies and mirrors your screen. Now, combined with the fact that Microsoft's own virtualization for running Android apps on Windows 11 also went live a few days ago through the Amazon App Store as well, we now have just an endless number of ways to run Windows on Android, Android on Windows, and apps that can be installed and streamed back and forth in a multitude of ways. The only question is whether any of this is really all that useful. I still haven't found the real use case for using Android apps on Windows myself, but I'm sure that you already have and you'll let me know down in the comments. Okay, my second story of the week will be Chrome OS Flex, which is both new and old. Let me explain. So Chrome OS Flex is a newly announced tool that is designed to boot and install from a USB drive on Windows or Mac. You plug it in, you hit install, and then it basically replaces your operating system with a Chrome browser. And that's about it. The idea is to plug this into that old laptop that you last used in 2012 that's barely clinging on to life, which should still be able to run Chrome just fine. And if this sounds familiar, it's because this was previously known as Cloud Ready, which Google bought back in 2020. Chrome OS Flex even refers multiple times to Cloud Ready in the documentation, so the rebranding is really not a secret. What is new though is that on the one hand, this is now officially a Google product with all the support Google can give, but on the other hand, Flex now also has support for extra Google services like the Google Assistant, Smart Lock, and more. Now this is a very basic installation of Chrome OS, so it doesn't support advanced hardware features like SD card readers, fingerprint readers, or whatever else your computer might have. And you also can't run Android apps on it, for example, like you can on regular Chrome OS, but it might still be good enough to just have a Chrome browser on a machine that was previously basically unusable. Okay, and my third story this week will be Google finally joining Apple and cracking down on invasive tracking on mobile operating systems. 
Except their newly announced solution, of course, seems a lot less concrete than that of Apple. So this week, Google announced that it is rolling out Privacy Sandbox, its so-called privacy-preserving advertising system, to Android, not just the web. And the main idea here is to, quote, phase out third-party cooking and limit covert tracking, including, quote, limit sharing of user data with third parties and operate without cross-app identifiers, including advertising ID. So Google is phasing out some of its existing tracking technologies, including cross-app tracking IDs. And if you remember correctly, that is pretty much exactly what Apple did with this prompt just a couple of months ago as well. Apple gave users a choice. Apparently only 4% of users chose to opt in to continue using cross-app advertising IDs on their platforms, causing a massive shift in the online advertising market. And if Google were to do the same, that would be quite radical. But as you might expect from a company that made most of its over $250 billion in revenue last year from online advertising and tracking users online, of course, their approach is a lot more flexible. First, Google promised to, quote, not to be disruptive, unlike Apple, and said that they would support existing technologies for at least two more years. So no guarantees and definitely no changes until 2024 at least. And second, Google is of course not just shutting down old technologies, they're actually spending the next couple of years building replacements for it, and they're doing so in collaboration with all of your favorite advertising companies who just can't wait to really respect your privacy for once. Here is Facebook congratulating them, for example, and here is Snapchat doing the exact same, while also unironically claiming that they placed privacy at the center of how they designed their products forever. So that is super reassuring. Anyway, Google has announced three main building blocks so far, topics, fledge, and a new attribution reporting system. And while I won't bore you to death with the tech Practical details, Google basically describes a new system that can track you pretty much the same amount as the old one and can more or less do all the standard stuff like remarketing across apps, attributing purchases to advertisers across apps, etc. But this system should at least share less personal information about you with companies in the process. If you remember a previous episode I did on Google's Flock concept from a while ago, that's basically a big part of what's coming to Android. So Google isn't saying that there'll be less tracking or God forbid, less advertising. They're just saying that during this insane marketing process, fewer companies will actually get to receive your personal information, which is some kind of an improvement, I guess. Now, there are still lots of gaps in this plan and Google was very light on the details so far, but oh well, testing on Android will apparently start later this year and maybe they will surprise us with something interesting. I bet a bunch of people in online advertising in particular are pondering their next moves and maybe even thinking about switching careers. And if they are, they should be taking a look at Brilliant and so should you. Brilliant is the interactive online learning platform for science, computer science, and more. And whether you want to invest into yourself to get a better job and improve your life, or just to learn something new and interesting for fun, they are the place to do just that. Brilliant's interactive courses will help you level up your STEM skills in a really fun and effective way. And I particularly love their newly reworked computer science classes that go from explaining how exactly a computer makes its most simple decisions, all the way up to complex algorithms, machine learning, and more. There are clear pathways from beginner to advanced and everything is interactive, with lessons having exercises attached to them right away so you can learn by doing. That setup really suits my learning style because you're learning by practicing and making mistakes and getting help, and it's just so much more effective and enjoyable than reading notes or passively watching a lecture. The first 200 people who sign up with brilliant.org slash TFC will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription, so check them out. Links are down in the description and I'll see you next Friday.